Hello, everybody. It's Hadrian Plass here. Yes, and Bridget. Hello. And it's uh, Sounding the Shadows 177. It is. Yeah. And if you remember last week, we were talking about autumn and we were talking about some of the beauty of autumn. Well, in the UK, it's been raining pretty well solidly. There's floods, there's winds, there's a potential... Well, they say almost a hurricane coming up over the channel yes. to the south of England. So we'll see. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we don't we don't know yet. But I hope I hope people will be prepared for that because in this country, <laughs> those who don't live here, we are never prepared for any weather. Really, seems to me. No. But uh, perhaps we will. We of course we had a, a hurricane. Um, oh, a long time ago, nineteen eighty-seven. Uh, yeah. I don't know if it actually what was a hurricane, but it oh, swept it across was. the south of England. Yeah. And it was yeah. really, really alarming. Yeah, I, so I mean, it, we'll it, it, even even that compares so flimsily. Well, I don't know people having their homes flooded would think that, but looking at the news, I mean, there is one small glimmer of hope, isn't there, in the news at the moment, and that's that some people are getting out of Gaza. Yeah, it's a tiny border between Egypt and and Gaza, and there's one point on it where now. At last, thank goodness, uh, some there's some movement, stuff coming in, and people going out. Yeah, I, don't, I think, great. and it is great. Mm. I mean, it is a, a mini exodus of people who have got dual nationality passports mm. and people who are really injured. But yeah, it it is, I as well clearly quite traumatic. There's oh, a yeah. lot of people who ha are oh. leaving behind family yeah. and friends and yeah. people they knew when they were living a normal yeah, somebody life somebody said didn't they we i feel good because i'm i'm moving out i feel bad because i'm leaving and then they mm. named a, had a list of people in mm. family um it's, it's rather poignant because the cap crossing is called rafa which is also the name <laughs> of our our grandson yes. which is very strange really <laughs> which well, uh, not quite spelt the same no but, uh, it's not spelt the same yeah you and know. it you know, the story of the Bible is full of people leaving their familiar lands, isn't it? And and ending up somewhere else, either because they've been caught up in slavery or because mm. they've been caught up in war or because they've been sold, like Joseph, yeah. you and know. We mentioned it, Daniel, didn't we, a yeah. few weeks ago, being yeah. suddenly have, facing the fact that he would never see home again. Yes. Because he'd probably be consumed by Darius's yeah. lions. Oh, yeah. there was a film of parents telling their children you know putting them into bed in funny little makeshift tents and yeah. saying saying to them you know one day we'll go home again mm. obviously not knowing if that's so I yeah. yeah I think the leaving of any tiny bit of home must be so hard so yeah. hard yeah. I mean we were thinking as well weren't we about people who made choices to leave and would be leaving behind everything that they knew and we had an email this week from somebody as you know last week you did um you did a limerick about elijah i did and what was um, it you said in your limerick about somebody what oh jezebel yes what was it well i said that courage decays on those jezebel days mm. for elijah anyway mm. yeah uh, yeah and that was interesting email because this is somebody we've known for some time. And she's a writer, and a wonderful writer. She writes some very interesting things. Mm. But she mm. pointed out she'd done some research in a book she's now... Uh, I've forgotten she's still now doing well, it Well, it's called it? Heroes or Villains, and, and ah, it's about Jezebel. Right. And, yeah. and she's saying, although obviously she was wicked, we know yeah. she was wicked, yeah. um, and she did do some very wicked things, but she didn't always start out that way, and that the marriage that she ended up in mm. was she was wrenched from her home for a political mm. marriage. And um, and her religion, which we, we, we dub pagan, mm. extraordinarily she hung on to, yeah. despite everything that God and Elijah were, yeah. were, were throwing at that situation. Yeah. And I think, yeah, we, we talked a couple of times, haven't we, about in the course of working with very disturbed or un sometimes unpleasant children in care, um, there weren't many very unpleasant ones, but, but kids who 
um, when you knew their background, when you mm. looked at the files, you thought, well, it's a wonder you've survived at all, let mm. alone survived with the problems you, you have. Well, that's but, an uh, interesting one, Adrian, because, I mean, one of the groups of children you worked with were the idea was that they would be fostered or adopted. Mm. And so they, they had this chance for freedom and to leave yeah. the situation they were in, a, a lock-up secure unit. Yeah. Um, but they were then leaving behind everything familiar as well in their, in a way. What, when leaving the... Well, not just the secure unit at all, though actually well, that I, was I very secure. For some, it was, it was the first bit of security of one kind they'd ever known because mm. they knew exactly what to do from mm. when... when uh, now, I know some people will say that's awful, but mm. it was actually quite an eccentric environment mm -hmm, because yeah. we, it was very warm, we did all actually. sorts of, mm. of things. Mm. But, but they... If you come from chaos, if you come out of chaos at home, chaos in your community, mm. and you have a little little island where you're on for a little while, mm. and although you'd want to go home, mm. there's still a part of you that says, I knew where I was on my mm. island. Mm. I wouldn't mind being back on my island for a while. I suppose the terrible thing for people leaving, some of them going through that border crossing into Egypt, for some of them it'll be going home where they'll be greeted with such love and yeah. relief yeah. but for some they're just going into more chaos they don't know where they're going they're just mm. there for the day and uh, yeah. it, it we are in a very luxurious position when we can look at some of the things in the bible some of the stories and even jesus talking about counting the cost saying if you want mm. to follow me you need to count the cost i mean he meant didn't just mean that physically did he Oh, far from it. No, I, I think there, there is um, that there are steps or degrees. I can't think what the metaphor is in really following that are quite threatening to human beings, because at some point you may have to make choices that seriously affect your the course of your life. Mm. Um, and you may um, have to leave behind, either physically or mentally or yeah, spiritually, yeah, so all that is familiar, your yeah, friends, your family who are yeah. not going to understand. One of the questions that we've often asked and seems to me more interesting and important than ever for those who do believe, I can only speak for Christians because it's the only one I know, but is what kind of safety do you want? Um, mm. uh, when you say you want to follow, do you mean within certain boundaries do you mean as long as this doesn't happen mm. and and i say and that having that's... known that we've said that and not yeah. meant it um because mm. it's very hard to uh, to step out in the way that sometimes mm. we were called to do. yeah maybe maybe it's i'm not necessarily more complicated but i mean we met a a hindu driver didn't we when we were in bangladesh with world vision and he was the world vision driver mm. and he was telling us uh, about the fact that he and his wife had secretly become christian but it could never be public yeah, they could I'm never sure live the phrase, life because yeah, that's absolutely because right, yeah. because they would lose everything i'm not sure what phrase he used i mean i mean what happened if you remember was that they went to a christian meeting in fact mm. And I, I don't know what other people think about this sort of slain in the spirit thing where people fall over and, and that there's a there's a whole debate about that. But that's what happened to them. Mm. And she She was hadn't been able to have to a child had pregnant. She? Mm. And that happened to them and shortly after that she did become pregnant. Mm. I mean that's that mm. that's simply what happened. Mm. Over, you know, mm. connections and I leave to God. But, but also what happened is the knowledge that they would lose everything. Well they would lose everything. All they their family could contact. lose their family, yeah. 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 And 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 yeah. and lose the understanding of people who had been friends. Mm. They would not understand. Yeah. It's a and I it's really such a cannot huge thing. could not begin to say what would be the right thing to do. No. I mean, we we've often talked about good old Naaman in the in the Old Testament, who was frightened that when he went back to his hometown, he'd have to not bow down to the the the, the god that they worshipped there, because he now knew who the true Rimon god was. Rimon, it was, Rimon. wasn't it? Yeah, yes, there's a lot right, of them remember. around. And yeah. um, mm. and uh, Elisha the prophet said. 
well more or less said it to, you know there's enough problems at the moment without that as well he um well actually he, he said, didn't say all peace. that yes well yeah, no, but go that, in peace no but that's what he said go yeah. in peace in other yeah. words don't let that be a hindrance to you no. now um, no. wait and see i guess he would have said is what mm. the next thing is mm. so it isn't as cut and dried as saying no. what you have to always do that thing but think going back no. to jesus i mean he lost most of his followers at one point not not because um of anything about them but because he said something they didn't like but for him you the, you were following a route. You were following a a, a plan. Mm. You were you were following a, a principle mm. that was immutable. It could not be changed, and therefore, uh, he's uh, what he I mean, he's actually turned said to Peter, didn't he? You you're going to go as well on the mm. other disciples. Mm. So yeah, mm. and we've seen it with. And of um, course, I mean, he didn't look right. He didn't look right. You know, call yourself a Messiah. Yeah. You know. Um, he didn't look right. He didn't say the right things. He wasn't out to completely restore uh, the kingdom of Jerusalem and get rid of the Romans. He wasn't. He didn't want to build an empire, and he didn't. He mm. left a little tiny group of people who were obedient enough after he'd gone to go back and wait Just until. Sit in a room. Yes, yeah. which is quite quite extraordinary, really. Yeah. But yeah. I, yes. But it, it can be painful, can't it? Leaving, knowing that in your decisions that you've made, mm. you are going to lose not followers, but friends, family, people who are never someone, going to yeah. fully understand. Yeah. And I was thinking, Adrian, of the very first job that we had with children. Mm. Um, and we were there for three years. And we were expecting to be there for three years. And we knew we were going to leave. You needed to get some qualifications you didn't mm. have. And it was all made sense mm. but it didn't make sense to a 10 year old little boy no it didn't and no it was a, it's a horrible memory I mean uh, nothing compared with the stuff going on in the news now but for him who'd had a difficult life and obviously he looked at the, the grown ups around him and discovered people who seemed to care for him and and like him and we were we were two of those and when he learned that we were going leaving uh, he said um, he climbed up because yeah, children aren't no. allowed to climb on laps no, anymore not, but he no, climbed no. onto your lap didn't he I and know. really looked you in the eyes and he said um, he said if you loved me you wouldn't leave You'd stay and we I mean we didn't love him enough to not leave no we cared about him we very moved by him but uh I, 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 and there's something about that that um dynamic that is is so painful mm. that somebody else has invested mm. so much in you mm. and you can't afford to invest the same amount in them but the uh, other way round of course is is the families who are left behind in Gaza who are persuading people to leave, who love them so much that yeah. they are saying, go. I mean, mm. you see it on a very minor level in one of these programs about people emigrating to Australia, where yeah. there's always very tearful bits of film footage of the family left mm. behind. Mm. And you see how often the family who are gonna lose their daughter, son, grandchildren, yeah. whatever, are saying you've got to go yes. if it's the right thing to they do. They don't always say it with. They they're oh. very brave often, aren't I think they? They're very brave. They are, but yeah, I quite. I mean, I, I, I think the only thing I know is that if I was in that situation in Gaza and there was an opportunity for one of my family to leave, yeah, I would want them to go. I mean, I pretty sure about that really um, and I think a load of people would tune into that thinking really um, mm. but this, these are these are heart-wrenching decisions that people are having to make yeah but they are I mean and we can only have a pale reflection of this really but we do have decisions sometimes we have to make well one of the things is well, it's very minor in comparison but when I started to write I wrote a funny book 
Well, actually, the first book I wrote wasn't very funny. It was <laughs> kind of autobiographical. Who I thought well, and was, you wrote the book who about I, the children. Uh, who I thought was going to read it, I don't know. Uh, a book about me. Well, no, but, then you um, wrote the book about working then I, with children. No, no, I, the next one was The Sacred Diary. But, oh, um, sorry. Uh, and then that, that lots of people knew about. But after that, I had it. I, I, and I think I was right, but now um, I thought, I don't want to go on writing that book for the next 40 years. Which does happen with books. They used to, I can't remember what they used to call Echo it. Echo books. Echo books, where you write a book with making a point, and then you write another four books making the same point. Um, so I wrote a book of short stories called The Final Boundary, it was called. Yes, that, that was quite a shock to quite a lot of people. Well, some people Took brought, brought them back to the shop and back. said, it's not very funny, this book. <laughs> no. So obviously they thought, you know, he's... He's turned to writing boring little short stories. But I, I had n n no regrets at all about that because, in a sense, it set me free because mm. I wasn't constrained by that. And l later on, I was able to write, mm. you know, another mm. sacred diary. But the, 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 it, it's not easy because there's, there's always you know are not, no someone saying to you, but... But have you really thought about this? I mean, your mm. father was one of them when, when I became ill and had to stop working uh, in oh. the childcare. No, oh, but I understand it. Mm. And he was saying, but how are you going to live and what are you going to... Mm. And whoever you spoke to about being a writer would say, and again, with good reason, but you're very unlikely to make a living. And that, that doesn't mean everyone's got to do the thing they fancy doing. But, no. but there has it to can be a, be a lonely road, though. I mean, I don't think it was so lonely for you because you wrote something that made people laugh. That was your first book. But I think, I think for a lot of people, setting out on on something that they really believe is is maybe the right way to go. Yeah. I just am so aware that that they will know that people are not going to mm. understand. Yeah. Well, actually, when we came up to Scargill House, mm. there were a lot of our friends who really couldn't understand why we would want to come north. A lot of friends before that, <laughs> and I couldn't understand why we got married, let alone why we came north. <laughs> well, you, that's you, true were, too. you were too emotional, I was too unemotional, <laughs> and uh, none of it was going to work. <laughs> right, I don't remember it quite like that. Adrian. Oh, I think it might have been. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But sometimes sometimes saying something that is maybe maybe you think is is not going to fit mm -hmm. is going to be different can be the very best thing there's oh, one thing you yeah, said yeah. that you discovered for yourself that we still get emails about yeah I do and no, it's it's very moving really um after i've had this um stress on us back in the whenever late -ish 80s or something and i was I was, I was spent most days up in our sitting room up in the on the first floor, and uh, was kind of thinking and trying to trying to do bits of writing and stuff. And uh, it became very comfortable in terms of of God. And I mean by that, because I think people say this too easily, but there developed an ethos, an atmosphere of all rightness. Is the only way I can describe it because you know in the sort of churches uh, that one has been in it, mm. some of the rules can be mm. really tough mm. because they're, they're invisible mm. but I, I I felt a in that time and probably because I only because I wasn't well then I was able to say I I I think God likes me, mm. and, and He seems very nice. Yeah, you say God is nice, God and, is he nice likes and He likes me. me. And yeah. I can remember in yeah. one or two meeting, public meetings, you know, when it came to question time, people saying, well, "You're always saying that, but you know, is that isn't that a bit pale? Isn't mm. that a bit less than?" Well, and I remember when we were working in Switzerland once, Adrian, our translation kept mm. turning, changing, nice to good, yeah. and that was one word we could at least understand. Well, that's right. God is good. <laughs> God is good. And I said, oh, "Hold on a minute." He's we know that, that. We know he's good. Mm. We've always known that. But mm. I mean, I suppose the bottom line for all that is that if you discover something and it's good for you and mm. it's true. 
you're very lucky. Mm. If it's a thing that is yours, mm. that's a very lucky thing. Mm. And you wouldn't want to jettison it no. because other people didn't quite agree with you. It's a big one, though. I mean, it, it, it's saying it's pale. You think at the moment with this huge horror going mm. on, yeah. it does sound pale. Yeah, it does. But yeah. my prayer, I suppose, is for people crossing this boundary, for people left behind, that they might catch a glimmer through people helping them or through mm. that people that's, who are nice that god is nice yeah. that, people that who like people them. are nice that people they are, are liked kind. yeah yeah it's a, so although it's a small prayer it's a huge prayer well those people working out there and we know there are lots of people really working like mad mm. for them to understand and many of them already do that a, a tiny con contribution of kindness mm. to someone who has lost mm. everything mm. can mm. produce the most remarkable effect. Mm. So, I I certainly pray for those pray who for are all suffering. the agencies who are and coming in, agencies, and uh, yeah. you know, people bringing yeah. bringing something that just makes life feel a little bit better. And yeah. for those who've left, yeah, and thank God they exist, and they're pursuing what they believe, and they're not going to be put off. No. So, yeah. so there we are there we are oh dear <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh Hopefully. but it is a glimmer of hope yeah, there is. are some yeah. people leaving yeah. some aid is getting in some mm. people are leaving we need to hang on to those tiny tiny yeah. little, it little is, flames it is of dark hope. there are flickers of light yeah. in, a, in a very dark world at the moment so there we are and we'll be back with you soon God bless. Bye-bye.